All right, class. This is your next history project. Get ready. Come on, come on. It's going to be awesome. So look, your job is to conduct a research project relating to some part of World War I. We are doing this project to celebrate the centennial of the United States entering World War I. It would be preferable that you choose to When most people think of World War I, they think of Europe, Africa, mud, and trenches. When in reality, the war isn't always so far away. John Lyon, Henry G. Smalley, Robert G. Bruce, Harry R. Stone, Irvin Thomas Chapman Newman, Harry E. Vermillion, Edward J. Smith, Archie Walters Williams, Frederick Wallace Shutt, Frank Duncan, Oscar L. Housel, Arthur Morgan, Ralph Lowe. Seriously, when you think about it, Arlington played a pretty big role being so close to D.C. Now, every time you turn a corner, you see a huge construction site, towering office buildings, or even an overcrowded mall. But back then, things weren't as compact as they are now. Through my research, I found out about Arlington's past. But at the time, it wasn't even called Arlington. In fact, it was actually called Alexandria County. Did you know that during World War I, we had a population of around 12,000 people? The population is more than 10 times that today. Back then, Arlington was actually very rural. There were no humongous shopping centers or any sprawling urban communities. In the 19-teens, Arlington was mostly rural. It had a population of approximately 12,000. Almost all rural and what passed for towns were some of the neighborhoods we have now. Balls Crossroads, now Ballston. Uh, you had Del Rey, uh, some in Roslyn, uh, but you also had Knock and Halls Hill, the African American communities. So it was mostly farmland and woods, dairy farms, uh, with small settlements here, there, and then individual houses. Only about 5% of the county were immigrants, which is about a third of the national average. That was not unusual in the South. That's fairly close to where Virginia was as a whole. Uh, and the immigrant population, such as it was in Arlington, tended to be not traditional as well. This is a period where those most immigrants to the U.S. were from Southern and Eastern Europe. From Arlington, the largest immigrant groups were from England, Germany, and Ireland. Uh, it was still, besides the farms, a lot of people commuting into D.C. for work. A lot of federal employees or work for agencies that supported the federal government. Uh, generally, you would walk. You could take, there was some light rail you could take in, but a lot was walking over the bridge and catching light rail. Uh, for entertainment, you went to either Alexandria City or DC. Even to go to school, for the most part, if you want to go to high school, most Arlington kids went to DC. Uh, and even for levels below high school, you often went to DC or into Alexandria, DC was more common. All right, so now to all the stuff that you probably already know. If not, here's a short history lesson. In 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated and this caused a chain reaction. Long story short, Europe was at war, blah, blah, blah. Three years later, after the sinking of the Lusitania, intercepting the Zimmermann telegram and attacks on US ships by German submarines led to the US entering the war to end all wars. The Germans announced that there will be a resumption of unrestricted submarine warfare. Even neutral vessels seeking to appear in that zone carrying supplies to Britain will be subject to attack. We protest and we send a warning to the Germans that they have now adopted unrestricted war and we may have to review our options again. And finally, Wilson's patience is running out. W Wilson is going to call Congress into a special session. Before he does it, to consider all options, uh, going from further protests to possible declaration of war. But 
On another note, what I bet you didn't know was that here in Arlington, our very own Fort Myer actually housed engineering, artillery, and chemical warfare units. They even had some mock trenches where French officers taught Americans the basics of trench warfare. In fact, right here in Arlington, we have a war memorial for the soldiers from Arlington. The Clarendon War Memorial is located here in Arlington County. It's right by the Clarendon Metro Station. It is a fairly large stone memorial that has several plaques on it. Originally, there was just a plaque with the names of Arlingtonians who died in World War I, but in subsequent years, other plaques have been added for each of the wars the U.S. participated in. So now, it's not just a World War I memorial, but a memorial to all Arlingtonians who have died in military combat or related activities since World War I. The memorial was created by the American Legion post here in Arlington, and it was also done with a lot of involvement from different community members. The Clarendon War Memorial was established in the form of that statue, and it was dedicated on November 11, 1931. And the Washington Post tells us that over 2,000 people came to that ceremony, which is a lot of people for even today. So if you can imagine back in 1931, that many people flooding the streets of Arlington, it's really impressive to think about. They had a lot of interesting speakers. One of the people who participated was 13-year-old Catherine Bruce. She was the daughter of Robert Bruce, who is actually memorialized on that World War I plaque. He lost his life in World War I. And she was the person that was selected to unveil the memorial during the ceremony. It's a memorial built by veterans, for veterans, and about veterans. And it belongs to the American Legion. Uh, it resides on county property, but it has ever since the day it was first built, which was in Clarendon, where the circle used to be, where Wilson Boulevard meets Clarendon Boulevard. And then it was moved once down to the courthouse in, uh, in the 40s, and then it was moved back up to Clarendon in 84. On that war memorial, there are 13 names of soldiers who fought and died in World War I, all from Arlington County. Their service to us is immortalized on that plaque. They lived in Clarendon and Cherrydale and Roslyn, Halls Hill, Knock Green Valley was one as well. They were from D.C., Illinois, uh, Indiana, um, Connecticut. They were from all over the place, just like Arlington is today. They were really all over the board. Eleven of them were in the Army, Two of them were in the Navy, um, and in the Army they were in the cavalry, infantry, artillery. Um, they, there was a little bit of everything. So just like Arlington is today, there was a cross-section of who they were, the kinds of people they were, um, and, and what they did in the military. One of the problems that has brought the Clarendon War Memorial under some pressure is the segregation of the names of the African-American soldiers. If you think about what Arlington was like in 1931, what the country was like in 1931. We were a segregated country at the time and we were a segregated community at the time. And so this was considered normal. I look at that plaque as a credit report. If I was to get a credit report, I would look it over and if I saw any discrepancies, I would speak up and have them removed. So as I look at this plaque, I see discrepancies on the credit report because it is a credit report of the people that served in the World War I. And on the credit report, I see that there is a segregation and there are two people that have the word colored by their name. No one else has a segregation or giving of their ethnicity, but except these two people. So on that credit report, I see a discrepancy. We have always taken the stance of, it's history. You cannot whitewash it. You cannot change it. It happened. You need to learn from it. You need to understand that since then, things have changed, and they've changed pretty dramatically since then. Although it has come as far as others, as many people would like, no. Has it come as far as I'd like, no but it has changed. That separation of those two names is really a condemnation of not only the American Legion in Arlington, but the nation as a whole. John Lyon is probably the 
most uh, well-known of the 13 men, John Lyon was the most decorated of all Arlington soldiers uh, in the war. So he goes and he's uh, an, an ambulance corps driver um, in World War I, and he's in the trenches. But he writes home to his mom and says, oh, you know, he's driving doctors around and Paris is filled with flowers. But he writes to his sister and he tells her more. Now there's censors, so he couldn't say very much, but it's clear from his letters that he was, he was really moved, he was really changed. He is one of the people who goes out to uh, American Expeditionary Force to France with General Blackjack uh, Pershing. So, okay, here he is, now he's in France, manning a machine gun. And he's um, on, the, on the front, and he sees uh, another officer who's been gunned down. He leaves the relative safety of his, of his machine gun nest, and he goes and tries to drag that man to safety. That man lived, John Lyon died. He earns a few medals, and his parents don't hear about it. They get the word after um, the armistice is over. So can you imagine? Armistice. Everybody's happy, the war is over, then you hear your son is dead. Then they get a letter from the guy he saved saying what happened. But unfortunately we know the most only about one man, John Lyon. It's important to know about our roles in all wars, mainly because you have to recognize that the veteran guarantees your liberty. Uh, they did in 1917 and they do today. And that those people who died to give you, the, you and me, the liberties that we have deserve to be recognized. I knew my last stop had to be a big one, so I decided to go to the Arlington National Cemetery. I learned about many soldiers in my research. They all paid the ultimate price. I went to visit their graves and pay my respects. Harry R. Stone, drowned. Edward J. Smith, died of disease. Frederick Wallace Shutt, died of disease. Harry Vermillion, cause of death, unknown. Frank Edward Duncan, most likely died in combat. Archie Walters Williams, died of influenza. Arthur C. Morgan, cause of death is unknown. Irvin Thomas Chapman Newman, died in a training accident. 